All right, we are up and ready to leave Cows, and um, we're gonna be heading to Chichester. Uh, I think we're gonna try our first night on anchor. Yeah, so excited. Very exciting. The wind was predicted at sort of 20 knots today, um, but it's barely five, I think, um, which is actually pretty good because we'll be beating into it um, and also the tide. So it's, um, yeah, it's good to, um, yeah, to have a nice chilled one if we are under motor. But we'll see how we get on. If we can put ourselves up, we will. Uh, wish us luck. Just waiting for some neighbours to leave first, and then we'll be ready. Our plan today was to get as close to home as possible, to make our return to Brighton the following day as short as we could. There is a lovely little anchorage within the Chichester Channel called Easthead, offering all round protection and stunning views of a rare and fragile coastal sand dune habitat. Okay, we have just left cows. You can see cows in the background and it's my birthday and the sun is shining and we are heading to Chichester. The wind's not blowing, but that's fine by us. Yesterday we had 25 knots sort of wind and we're beating into it the whole way. And it was supposed to be the same today, but um, it's like five knots. So we're, um, yeah, we're not beating into it. <laughs> we are beating into a bit of tide, so we're only making sort of 3.8 knots under engine. But um, yeah, we've got all the time in the world, so. beautiful day and it's Chris's birthday so if we've got a hell of a sail back tomorrow it's not a bad thing but um, yeah it just might take us a while maybe we should just start going back to Brighton now 
you might get. Yeah. Back at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll uh, keep posted. It's a bit roly now, we're facing sideways, but um, yeah, and we're just just watching the depth because we're. Um, I'll watch it. Well, yeah, we're three, four meters as we're coming up the channel. It's low, low tide pretty much now, so we should be able to, able to see all of the sort of sticky points. Yeah. And. We are yeah. absolutely infested with bugs. Yeah. They are everywhere. Sorry if this camera's a bit shaky because we are covered, if you can even see them, in these shitty little bugs everywhere. got how much chain out? 25. 25 chain in 7.5 meters depth. So sure we probably need a bit more. Might need a bit more but Might we're just well. kind of assessing it for the moment we've not moved. Well it's it's seven on a rising tide so we need to calculate how much mm. the tide's gonna rise by and then put out enough for that calculation mm -hmm. which I have here I think. We're only on neeps and so it's not a huge increase. It's only going to be like a metre if anything, or not even. Two metres. We're moving a bit. We've twisted round a bit. Yeah, that was the wind. So it's low tide. It's rising tide now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First time on anchor, but the first time sleeping on anchor potentially. If I actually do sleep.
So this is our first night on anchor. <laughs> We've just bedded down and hoping to actually get some sleep. Hopefully. Um, we have set an anchor alarm on the trout plotter and our friend Lauren has given us a great bit of info about um, an app that she uses. Um, and we've just set that up, so it's, um, we'll tell you more about that in the morning. But, yeah, hopefully that'll get an alarm. Yeah, an alarm will go off on, yeah. on that. Hopefully we don't need it and no alarm goes off, other than the one that will wake us up at half past five tomorrow morning. Yeah, early start. Got to get back before the winds change in the wrong direction. So, hoping we can get the right angle on it and, um, yeah. We'll get there. Yeah, we will. We will. Anyway, I'm tired. <laughs> Me too. Good night. <laughs> Good morning. It is 5.50 in the morning. It actually looks lighter than it is, but um, yeah, we are just with the anchor and we are now motoring out of Chichester. So, hoping to get an early start so we can catch the wind this morning on the way back to Brighton. And we had a bit of a disaster this morning because the winch didn't work as we were raising the, the anchor. The windlass, I keep saying winch, windlass didn't work as we were lifting the anchor. So Chris had to handball it back on, which was not ideal. Um, but yeah, managed to get off and yeah, we're just heading on out now. How are you feeling? Knackered after that. Yeah, thank you, good job. And it's really cold, we've got our gear on. It breaks there. Yeah. Swim. Right, just an update. We are sailing in pretty choppy conditions. You can't actually see, kind of. Doesn't really do much justice. Um, we're getting about 17 to 18 knot gusts, which doesn't sound too strong, but the sea state's pretty choppy. Uh, we are trying to make our way past the wind farm to then cut back into Brighton because there's not much wind sort of before the wind farm. I'm not making any sense. So if you want to carry on and take over, babe. What's happening? <laughs> trying to tell them what we're doing. Um, yeah, we just came out to Celsius Bill, round in Celsius Bill. We didn't think there was going to be much wind, but now we're getting like consistent 15s up to 17, 18s, um, which is great. We're pretty tight to the wind, um, but it's good because we're not overpowered them. We're taking a bit of head sailing, um, but we're actually on perfect angle of the wind, and we're heading to the back of the wind farm off of Brighton because we know the wind's going to be backing during the day which so this angle now will disappear but by the time we get to the other side of the wind farm we'll turn and then we'll hopefully have a beam all the way back fingers crossed which would be nice um it's pretty cold out here as you can see i look like a spaceman but yeah otherwise we're good what was supposed to be a seven or eight hour sail turned into a 14 hour nightmare. We underestimated just how vast the wind farm was and that would be facing into the wind from one end of it to the other. With some fairly large waves and 20 to 25 knots of wind, we were stuck behind the wind farm for five or six hours. As we're sure you'll understand, we didn't get much filming done out there. However, when we finally made it out and turned towards Brighton, we were on a perfect beam reach, as predicted. All the way home, and morale was instantly lifted. We didn't calculate that when the wind was about to shift or bear round, that um, we would then be dead onto it, beating against wind, tide and waves for what seemed like forever. And we weren't too sure if we were going to make it home before midnight or at all. 
I envisioned us having to tie up to a wind turbine and then climbing up onto it and just watching the ocean. That was what I saw happening. Now I think um, yeah, we weren't really getting anywhere under motor, we weren't getting anywhere under sail. Tried some really big long tacks out of it. Um, again, we, it wasn't really getting us anywhere so um, we were just resigning ourselves to floating around the wind farm heave two all night or something like that. Oh god. Anyway, let's look at this. It's far prettier. And me. You're beautiful baby, but you know, this is beautiful too. That's So, with some lessons learned and some experience gained, we treated ourselves to a huge takeaway. And got a somewhat ironic fortune. Thanks for watching!